Okay, so if you've never taken your throttle body off before, it's pretty simple. You're just going to disconnect all your vacuum hoses from the front here. And pull, pull out your um, TPS, disconnect your idle air control. Uh, you'll have to disc take these wires off the injectors. You squeeze these tabs and they pull out. And then you got a, there's a bush in here. Pull that off the front. And you want to mark those vacuum hoses if you if you're not real sure about it. Disconnect your throttle linkage and your uh, TV valve, the throttle valve for your transmission. sensor on the back and then it's just basically disconnecting the fuel lines on the back and then there's some half inch three half inch bolts that hold hold it on that's and that's it it should come right off okay guys when you're taking off your fuel lines off the back of your throttle body it's a good idea to have two wrenches you need a five ace and a three quarter inch because there's an adapter at the back you have to hold that adapter and then you can Turn your flare line with one of these flare line wrenches. Otherwise, the uh, other one will spin. It'll hard. It'll be hard to get off. So I've got everything all loosened up here. Got the bolts all loosened up. And we're ready to pull this throttle body off. And that's it. That's all there is to taking it off. Okay, once. You're getting ready to switch everything over to your new throttle body. You have to take these uh, two fittings out, the, out of the back here. And then you can pull your injector pot off. There's three screws that hold them on. There. And originally those would be a Torx bit screw. Like that, the little star shaped bits. But uh, I've got the injector spacer in there and it came with longer screws that were Allen heads. So I'm going to take those these two fittings out. So you get the two fittings. One's a pressure, one's a return line. And then your injector pad comes off. And this is a injector spacer. It's probably a quarter inch versus the what normally is in there is that gasket. I just saved the old gasket. And you don't need a gasket with the injector spacer. So it raises your pot up a bit. This is the company. I got this, uh, I believe I got it on eBay. Okay. So. Another thing I did was I put a adjustable pressure regulator on my injector pod on the back here. So there's uh, comes your stock spring comes in there and there's a spacer in there and you use an Allen key through the bottom you have to actually take the take all these Turks bit screws out of the top here take the whole top off then you can adjust the Allen head screw in the bottom of this adjustable pressure regulator here. And you can see, you kind of sort of, they get a little thing that sticks out the side there. You can sort of tell how far you adjusted it. Uh, I've got mine set at uh, 14 and a half pounds. And it's running pretty good at that. It's not running lean on the top end. So, yeah, just compare these two throttle bodies. There's a stack one. I did mill all the sharp edges off of it. Usually there's some raised edges all around the throttle area here. And then I blended the edge here. So it's a smooth transition. And you can see they didn't, <coughs> the new throttle body doesn't have it blended. It's just a sharp edge there. But they did mill down all those raised areas. 
they left a little tiny bit here so you can your gasket can sit on there nice um, but the main difference between these two is the bore diameter I'm not sure exactly how much bigger bore diameter is but I think the stock throttle body pulls like five a little over 500 CFM or something like that and then the new one is maybe five 550 and then the new one so that should give you a little more horsepower and you can see the difference in the get it to shot from the top here see the difference in the size of the throttle bodies blades the bore diameter So these bores are approximately inch and three quarters. This is bore two. And these, this is bore two. About inch and five eighths. So you're getting about an eighth inch bigger diameter bore on these. They pour the board out here, put in a bigger bigger uh, butterflies. You can see the heads on these screws kind of stick up a bit. They've used nice small ones and the blades are thinned, thinned right here. You can grind that down, which I did on mine too. That kind of, you can see originally they'd be raised up like on the edge here. Kind of pretty thick. I ground those down for a little better flow. You can probably see better difference in bore diameter from the bottom. So I'm going to slap this baby on. I'm going to do some data logs, see how much my fuel curve changed if it's leaning out. Just leave the pressure where it is. I was running a little bit rich on the bottom end with it set to 14 and a half, especially at idle. It's running richer at idle than it needs to be. I gotta tune that out yet. So when you adjust your fuel pressure, when you get one of these fuel pressure regulators, it's adjustable. You want to adjust it so that you're not running lean on top, and then you can tune the bottom end. You can make adjustments in your tuning program to uh, lean it out on the bottom if it's if it's running too rich elsewhere. But main, mainly what you're doing when you adjust your fuel pressure is for wide open throttle. So you're not running lean with all the modifications you made. Okay, so I got the uh, throttle position sensor swapped over on this Camaro engine. It has a non-adjustable throttle position sensor. So these screws go in and there's no slot in the screw holes. So you can't uh, adjust the voltage on this one. And then I'm right now I'm turning out the idle air control valve here. That just unscrews. There's a the gasket. And good idea to, as long as you got this out, take a look, see if there's any carbon buildup on that. She looks pretty clean on this one. It's a pretty low mileage engine. This uh, Camaro engine I got out, out of a 92 Camaro. It had about 40,000 miles on it. Got rented bad. It was totaled out, so good swap for my project. See how the idle air control valve works. There's a little pintle there, and the ECM controls the position of that in or out to make a vacuum leak to uh, for air to bypass the throttle blades. It comes in here, and that controls your idle speed. When you're putting your screws into your injector pod you're attaching it to the throttle body. It's a good idea to take a little Loctite onto these screws here. Because if these come loose they're going to fall right into the throttle into your engine. Okay so when you're putting your fuel fittings into your throttle body there should be a little plastic gasket 
a little plastic washer on the ends of these uh, fittings. So just make sure that's in there so you don't have any leaks. Okay, I've got everything swapped over to the new throttle body. And this is, uh, you have to specify, there's a couple different variations of throttle body. So if you have a Camaro, this linkage might be a little different than if you had a uh, truck. These throttle body engines came in a lot of pickup trucks. And they may have a different uh, throttle position sensor. Might have the adjustable type depending on the... Okay, I got the new throttle body all hooked up. Everything plugged in. <clears throat> And uh, oh, I want to talk about that injector spacer a little more. Um, what does is it raises up your injector pod, so that gives you a little more distance between here for better airflow. And it's also supposed to uh, atomize the fuel better, being raised up higher. But raising your fuel pressure will also uh, help atomize the fuel better, Get a little better spray. So I got everything hooked up over there start this up and I'm going to show you how to do a data log with Tuner Pro RT. Just be logging the data that comes out of the ECM. Looking at fuel trims, O2 sensor readings, voltage readings. That. Okay, I'm going to fire it up. I'm just going to come back here and check these fuel fittings in the back make sure there's no fuel leaks when I start it up. Sitting a while. 